Hey everybody, Tall Family Films here. I haven't seen many videos on YouTube, or any, that really cover the valve cover gasket replacement on an Acura RDX. So what I'm doing here is just removing the intercooler. Um, I sped this up because there's plenty of videos on uh, YouTube that talk about removing that, and it's not that hard to figure out. Um, so now we're down to where we can actually see the valve cover. So now we're going to remove this little black cover that sits on the front and there's just this wiring clip that holds this in place. And uh, I believe it just has some like a compression snap or something that physically holds it down. I don't quite remember, but it was pretty easy for me to figure out. I'm sure that you can too. And then I'm putting the wire back so that I don't kind of forget that where it went some later point because there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out of here. All right, so that power steering hose is going to have to be moved. Um, and we'll get to that here in just one second. There's also a clip in the back where that power steering hose runs through that I'm messing with right here. And it's going to make it a lot easier if we actually remove that clip as well. It's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds that on. Okay, so now that clip slash harness is out of the way. All right, so now we're gonna go after the ignition coils. Um, I start to remove the valve cover um, bolt itself, but then I change gears here and go after the ignition coils. So there's four of them across the top. They're each held in by a 10 millimeter bolt, which I've already removed, and a wiring clip on each one. So let's take these out. Okay, so now they're all off, and what I'm doing here is attempting to move this harness for all the ignition coils to move it to the back. Um, one thing I point out right here, um, that you need to pull that little oil connector off. There's just a spring clip that holds it on. Um, I should note, there is no room to push that harness back. That's not going to work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the power steering hose now. Um, two 10 millimeter bolts hold that on. When you remove this, you're gonna lose a little bit of fluid, but you don't need to worry about that. I didn't need to bleed the pump or anything after doing this. I just elevated the end of the hose, um, tied it to the top of the hood so that I wouldn't continue to leak fluid out while I was working on it. But you'll lose a couple of drops, not a big deal. I put a rubber glove over the end of it to catch any extra, and then I just taped it up there, which you'll see here in a later frame. All right, so I wanted to show you here the struggle that I had um, because you're gonna want to do this too and this will not work. I continue to try to think that there might just barely be enough room. I think if you force this over uh, all of the obstacles, you're going to break the harness. It just will not go far enough back. And moving that, tur that uh, intercooler bracket, the black bracket in the back, that's not gonna help you at all. I thought about this too. Um, do not waste your time here. Honestly, there is no way to do this without disconnecting the harness from the left side of the engine. So you don't need to remove the passenger wheel, but you do need to go down, um, turn the wheel to the right, and then take a flashlight under there. There's five connectors and you need to undo them all. They're all keyed, so you can't put them back wrong, but this took me about 10 minutes to do, and I spent at least that much time trying to figure out how I might be able to uh, do it a different way from the top. So now we move on to removing these acorn nuts. And so there, the way this is built is there's a nut, and underneath the nut is a silver, like an aluminum type disc that has a rubber disc inside of it. Don't lose any of these parts. Be careful on this part. All right, so, and then there are several in the back as well that we're gonna go after. Okay, so I'm just double checking, make sure I've got them all off. 
There is one more harness, uh, wiring harness here to the right side that holds some hoses on. Another 10 millimeter bolt. You've got to get that off because it's actually attached right to the valve cover. Okay, and I just sort of tuck that under and you should have room to get the valve cover off. I removed the oil dipstick, I suggest you do too, otherwise it's gonna dangle out the bottom and make this uh, you know, a lot higher pull that you have to do to get it loose. Also makes a nice handle right there, as you can see. And the valve cover is off. Okay, so you can see the old gasket right here. It's blue. Um, in all honesty, I think that I did not need to replace this gasket again. I was getting a little bit of oil into one of the tubes and we're going to talk about the gaskets for the oil tubes as well, but um, I was getting a little bit of oil in cylinder number two and uh, that is caused when there's some sort of either the seal gets broken on the gasket or it's just worn out. But in my case, I had just done this gasket probably six months before and you're gonna see why I had oil in one of the cylinders. So I'm just gonna take some brake cleaner and clean out the top of the cover and the track that I'm gonna to use to put the gasket in. Brake cleaner is an amazing uh, substance. It will clean just about anything. Don't get it in your eyes. Would not clean those very well at all. So, I just take a paper towel and I put a flathead screwdriver in the channel here and just run the paper towel um, just to clean out the channel. Get anything that was remaining in there out. You want this to be a very clean surface. Okay, now we need to get the seals out. I'm using an actual gasket seal puller. Um, I suggest you get one. They're pretty cheap. I think AutoZone had this for like $15. I'm sure that's pretty common across all the auto parts stores. Um, but you need to pull all of these. Seals. You can do it with a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver if you need to. Um, just be very careful and don't scratch the aluminum case that's underneath these rubber seals. Like, they're a seal for a reason and a scratch is going to make it impossible for the rubber to reseal it. Okay, so now I have them all four out. Let's take a look at what was going wrong here. See that one completely separated? Um, this one is smashed down. Um, I'm gonna try to give you a better angle of it here. You can see, see how it's smashed in the corner there? And in my redoing of this, I realized where I made my mistake and I'm gonna point that out to you in a minute. So I'm taking a large socket here and this socket needs to be large enough to actually cover the entire surface of that rubber gasket all the way out to the outside edge. Um, it's actually hard at that point and not flexible rubber. Notice that how these things are set in here. They can go in upside down. I do not think it would actually cause a leak if they were in upside down, but put them in the correct way. All right, before we can put the cover back on, we need to go clean up the old RTV sealant that's in here. You need to get something that's high temperature, um, and they will sell RTV high temp gasket sealer. And you need to put it on everywhere that the metal that's inside the engine, the, you know, where the cover is going to mate to, um, the aluminum is not one piece. And you'll see, if you look really closely, this is a gasket remover that I got. It, it, it worked pretty well. I would say, you know, you could do a, a decent job with a razor blade as well. Um, but you'll see if you look really closely where the metal is joined, the aluminum on the mating surface, you need to have RTV sealant on all of those joints. I believe there's two of them. This is one of the places here and there's another one in the back right. Um, I went ahead and put it on the four corners uh, just to be safe. Don't overdo it. Too much RTV is going to cause a leak and we're trying to prevent that here. Okay, 
I've added new RTV. Um, I let it sit for a couple of minutes till it gets tacky, according to the instructions on the tube. And we just put the valve cover back on. Try to get this on straight. You don't want to uh, disturb the RTV and um, you know put it on halfway on and pull it back off. And you're going to find that to be a challenge. Um, but with a little bit of patience, you can make it work. All right. Notice I'm pushing the cover down, and it doesn't really seem to be fitting well. Do you see this? So this is where I made my mistake last time. Was I went ahead and just tightened the cover down um, because I felt like everything was correct, um, but it's not. Okay, so let's go in and take a look at why it's not going down. Do you see the seals that we just put in? The one that's in this second hole to the right, you're going to see that one looks to be pretty straight right there. And that's not what's holding us up. But when we look at this one, do you see how it's kind of off center? We need to pull that back in and make sure that the valve cover is going to evenly go over the oil tube. If you force it down, it will just split the seal, which is what happened to me. So make sure you get all of those correct before you go putting the uh, acorn nuts back on to the valve cover. And there is an order to this. There's the order on the screen. You want to tighten them in this fashion. And you want to do this in two to three passes. In other words, don't crank down on bolt number one and then move to number two. So you want to do each one just a little bit until you go around two or three times. Then when you are finally ready to tighten them to their correct spec, it needs to be 8.7 foot-pounds. This is not very much. These are aluminum um, attaching to steel bolt heads. You will strip them. Don't do that. Get a torque wrench. Uh, without a torque wrench, honestly, I mean, this is, a, this is not very much pressure. Remember, there's a gasket under there, and the gasket, in order to work, cannot be squeezed. Well, at least don't over-squeeze it. Okay, so now we're just going to put everything back in the reverse order. Put the power steering hose back on. And again, these, this is going into aluminum, so you don't want to overdo anything here. I don't have the exact foot-pounds for this, but I just did not over-tighten it. There is a rubber seal in there acting as a gasket as well. All right, so put all the ignition coils back in and reattach. Um, all of the connections to them. Um, clearly, all of the connections on that left side of the engine that we had to take off from underneath the wheel well have to be reattached as well. I believe there's three down below and then there's two that are kind of on the top of the back side of the uh, valve cover that you'll have to attach. Just make sure you get them all. I'd count them when you have them out. I believe it's five. So we are closing in on the end of this video. Uh, we do have to put the intercooler back on, put all of its connections back on as well. Um, we're not going to show that in great detail here. Again, there's other videos on YouTube that show that. Um, I hope this video has helped you. If you'd like to help me, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. It'll help other people find it if they're searching for the same things you searched for and you give the video a thumbs up. So, thank you very much for watching.